Hello and welcome to SDK TV, powered by Data Meaning, brought to you by Patrick Karen. Today we're going to learn how to deploy custom visualizations using D3 on MicroStrategy 10. First off, what is D3? D3 stands for Data Driven Documents, and it's a dynamic JavaScript library for creating visual representations of data in a user interface, and it relies only on HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So why use D3? has a flexible, developer-friendly API. It's an open source community and a very large community at that. And there's over thousands of different plugins from different developers around the world. Now, with all that said, D3 and MicroStrategy go hand in hand. MicroStrategy can use D3 for data visualization by implementing it through custom visualization plugins. And this allows D3 to parse through MicroStrategy reports and create a visualization within the dashboard itself. And today, we're going to review the two different ways you can do this. The first, which is downloading a pre-configured D3 visualization from MicroStrategy's GitHub. And the second, which would be to choose a D3 visualization and configure it manually. So for this demo, we're going to use a Mac with OS X El Capitan, Apache Tomcat server version 8.0.32, with MicroStrategy version 10.2 installed, and Sublime Text for text editing. First thing you want to do is locate your MicroStrategy 10 folder, and within there, find your Plugins folder. That's where we're going to have any of our custom visualizations placed. So using the Word document from the description below, we're going to use one of MicroStrategy's pre-configured plugins. For this example, we're going to use the animated gauge. The link should be in the Word document provided. So from there, download the zip file, and extract the folder within there and place it inside your plugins folder. Once you have your plugin inside your plugins folder, you want to restart your MicroStrategy server. From there, you want to go into any project you have, I'm using MicroStrategy Tutorial here, and create a dashboard. Once you have the dashboard ready, if you look to the side, you'll see the plugins there. From there, you can click on the plugin and use it just as any other visualization. Apply metrics, attributes, whatever you like. So here, I'm just going to add some brief test data just so you can see how it works. Now, we can move on to the other method to add a visualization plugin, which is to manually configure it. So here we are, back in our plugins folder. Except this time, we're going to create a new folder on our own. We're going to call it Example Chart. Now from here, we want to create a few more folders so that way MicroStrategy knows exactly where to look. So the first we're going to create is JavaScript. The next will be Style. And the one after that will be, in capitals, Web-Inf. I-N-F. So first off, we're going to work with our JavaScript. So within the JavaScript folder, create another folder called Mojo. Now what Mojo is, is MicroStrategy's very own JavaScript interface. Basically the thing that connects anything you write for, with JavaScript to everything MicroStrategy has to offer. Now within Mojo, create another folder and name that folder JS. And within the JS folder, you want to create another one and name that folder source. This may seem like a lot, but this is what MicroStrategy needs to see so it can read your plugin correctly. Now we're going to move on to our text editor. My text editor is Sublime Text, but you can use anything you want. So here you can see I've opened up the plugin folder that we'll be working on. So within our source folder, we want to create a new file. We want to name that file examplechart.js. You'll notice that that's the same name we gave to our plugin folder. We want to keep our naming conventions the same throughout the entire plugin. And you'll see that throughout this demo. So referring back to the Word document, we're going to copy the base code for MicroStrategy. This will allow any JavaScript we put in from D3 to interface with the MicroStrategy dashboard. Once we paste our code in there, you'll see there's a section at the bottom that says JS code here. This is where we're going to put our D3 code. The D3 plugin we're going to use 
is this bar chart right here. We've provided a link to this page on the Word document. As you scroll down, you're going to see a bunch of JavaScript code. This is what's going to go in that section. It's important to note that this is boilerplate code, meaning you'll have to change a few things before it will work with MicroStrategy. If you refer to the Word document, we have the correct JavaScript code for this MicroStrategy plugin. So we're going to go ahead and copy and paste that code. If you closely examine both code bases, you'll see the differences. When installing future plugins, you'll have to make changes to the code based on your needs. The code may vary from plugin to plugin, so you can always use the two pieces of code that we provided as a guide. So now this code is ready to go. So let's go ahead and save this. So now we're ready to work with our CSS. So create a new file in the style folder. We want to save this file as global.css. While we're at it, let's create the other CSS file we need within the style folder. We're going to save this file as capital H, lowercase tml, the number 5, capital V, lowercase i, capital P, A-G-E, dot CSS. MicroStrategy needs the file names to be exact so it knows where to get its CSS from. After that, we want to go ahead and create another folder within style called images. Within that folder, we're going to have our thumbnail. And just to note, I've been creating these files and folders within Sublime, but they show up in the file system just the same. So going back to the D3 web page, we'll see there's CSS that we can use. However, MicroStrategy needs very specific class names for its CSS properties. We've provided the correct CSS code within that Word document, so let's go ahead and get that. The classes you see here are the ones that MicroStrategy expects to see. So once we paste this code into the global CSS file, we can save it and be done with it. Back within the Word file, we'll copy the next bit of code and put that within the HTML5 vipage.css file. Make sure that your background image property in your CSS has the URL pointing to your images folder to the image that's going to be your thumbnail. So we currently don't have a thumbnail in that folder. So we're going to go ahead and download this one right off of the Word document. So go ahead and save it. We want to name this file example chart icon .png, which is what we have in our background image property on our CSS. So let's just save this somewhere, and from there, we can just drag it straight into our images folder. Last but not least, we get to configure our XML. So within your web INF folder, create a new folder called XML. Within our XML folder, let's create a new file. We want to save that file as style catalog.xml. We provided the code you'll need for that within the Word document, so go ahead and copy paste that. If you check the style name and some of the parameters, you'll see they're set to example chart, which is our plugin's name. Once that's in, let's go ahead and save it. Now we need to create another folder within of XML. Let's call this folder config. Within config, we want to create another file which we will call visualizations.xml. Now there's two last bits of code in the Word document. They're both XML labeled by visualization tags. The first is code that's not configured, and the second is one that's configured for our plugin. You can tell because it has an ID of example chart. Once we've pasted the code, let's save it. Now all that's left to do is to restart our MicroStrategy server and test it out. So if we create a new dashboard, we look to the right, and our plugin is right there. So if we put some test data, and there's our plugin. And with that, that's the end of our demo. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and best of luck.